Good morning, Epic family. Love you guys. I miss you guys so much. I uh, wish I was with you right now. I've been praying for you and for your families a lot lately. Um, I've had this date on the calendar for a long time to come back and teach ever since I stepped away. And I've been looking forward to it and counting down the days when I get to come back and to hang out with you guys and to see you and to hear what's been going on in your lives. And this is not how I pictured teaching this morning with you guys. Um, my first ever uh, recorded sermon like this. So excited to be with you guys though this morning. We're going to have to reschedule and take a rain check and for me to come back and to be with you guys once this whole thing is over and to teach at Epic where I can be hanging out with you guys. Uh, makes me even miss even more. I was already missing you guys, but this makes me miss even more our Thursday nights and Sunday mornings and me getting to greet you guys at the door with a high five or a hug or slamming a nine square ball in your face. Um, makes me miss those times even more being with you guys. So excited to be here with you this morning. Um, it's been on my heart, man, this last couple weeks as things have been uh, going a little weird right now. Uh, I've been spending a lot of time in reflection and in prayer and really in praising God that no matter what our circumstances might be, that God is with us in them. Um, that God is, is working right now in and through our stories. So this past week, I feel like God's really put it on my heart um, this phrase that what we build our life on matters. What we build our life off of matters. And, and first I kind of thought like, yeah, of course, obviously. Uh, but as I sat with that a little more and I reflected on it, um, and I kind of looked through that lens at the world as a whole, what the world builds itself on matters, and what people individually build their lives on matters. And as I looked at with all that's going on right now, how so many, how the world seems to, in certain senses, and so many people's lives seem to have just kind of crumbled when they've built their lives on anything but God. People who've built their life on life on finances or job or uh, work success or school or social lives or all of these areas, maybe it's on jet skis or cash or fire, those types of areas. I can't even get a laugh right now, this is so weird. Um, People who've built their lives on those areas, those things seem to have kind of collapsed. And it uh, kind of makes me think of the image of this house of cards. And I was originally going to build this house of cards right here and then whoo, blow it and it would fall down like Katy Perry line there, a little shout out. It's a bad joke. We'll edit that out later. Um, but think of it as this house of cards kind of collapsing in. Um, but what we build our life on matters because when you build on anything other than Christ, it comes collapsing down through these types of trials and through life's trials in general. So what we build our life on matters, and it matters a lot. And we see that uh, throughout Scripture, and we see that today in the verse that we're going to be studying. So if you have your Bible, grab it. We are in 1 Peter 2, uh, chapter 2, verses 4 through 8. So I'm going to read it, and you can follow along. It says, As you come to him, the living stone, Rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious. But to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone that causes people to stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. All right, we're going to stop there. So I have a few thoughts that I want to just cover on this passage. The first one is, what is a cornerstone? If you're anything like me, the only thing you've ever built is from Ikea, and it has like 155 steps, and you finish it, and there's stuff left over, and it's no bueno. But maybe some of you are builders out there. But back in the day, these people were really building, not just Ikea stuff, but building their homes. They would have known that the cornerstone is just what it sounds like, a stone in the corner that you start to build off of that holds two walls together and is vital for the strength and integrity of a building so it doesn't fall down and collapse. And the people of this time would have known this. This would have resonated with them. Okay, so it made more sense that it's vital for these builders to know. So for us today... What does this mean for us? The cornerstone in our lives is like we used to talk about all the time when I was at Epic was it's the thing that our heart treasures the most. Our cornerstone is the thing that our heart treasures the most. The thing that we think about most often. 
Okay, what, what we're looking at most often, whether that be technology and screens, whether that be a mirror and ourselves, or God, what we spend our time and money on matters. Okay, this is, is shaping into what we do, what we spend our time doing. And that, what we spend our time doing, shapes who we are becoming. And in this passage, we see that Christ is the one true cornerstone. The one cornerstone that we can build off of and rely on. And we know that his strength will not be shaken no matter what. That we can build on him and we can trust in his strength regardless of circumstances. And we're told that this is true for Christ's church. Okay, the church as a whole, epic, bigger than epic, bigger than the, the, the youth center, okay, bigger than churches all over, the church as a whole, Christ's body, the believers. It's true for that, that he is the cornerstone. And it's true for us in our own individual lives as Christians, that Christ is the cornerstone that holds all things together. He is our treasure that we can trust and put our hope in. It says in this verse that we are like living stones and being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood. So what do we do with this now? Here is my challenge for us, Epic family, me included. All right, how do we build our lives off of Christ uh, and make him our cornerstone when we're stuck in quarantine? Maybe we just wait till this is all over? No, that was a trick question. Okay, this is a perfect time. We need to press into Christ, our cornerstone, during this time for us and our lives. Many of us have had our lives slowed down big time. Okay, we need to now more than ever build our lives on Christ, the cornerstone. And we need to now more than ever shine that to those around us. To in introduce them to Christ as the cornerstone in their lives as well. Because this right now is a time when so many people are sick or scared or feeling alone. Or maybe they're getting self-centered and selfish and they're stealing toilet paper from people. Don't do that. Okay, this is our time to love. To love these people and to share with them the peace and love that comes with having a cornerstone that is peace, that is hope, that is strength and love and kindness and thoughtfulness. We have now this time. And if you're watching this, you have some technology. Man, that we can uh, send notes or we can FaceTime or we can Zoom or we can do whatever. We can send care packages, okay? We can send encouragements to people, especially maybe to those we can seek out and, and send encouragements to those in our communities who are serving on the front lines right now, our healthcare workers and people who work at the grocery store and those teachers who are teaching online from home and trying to figure it out and your parents who are home right now and trying to help you with school and still work from home and shop and keep everybody in the house and all that goes along with that. There are a lot of people that need encouragement right now. And you guys have the chance to be Jesus' hands and feet. To remind us that we have a cornerstone we can depend on. Okay? So, I want to challenge you all. And I challenge myself with this. When times are tricky, like they are right now, look for ways to be a helper. When times are tricky, look for ways to be a helper. And that starts today in your house, with your family. Because, you guys, we have the greatest treasure of all. We have Christ, our cornerstone, that is peace, that is hope, that is healing, that is love and kindness and thoughtfulness. Our cornerstone is Jesus. Each of us needs that. Our families need that. Our community needs that. Our world needs that, now more than ever. So I want to end with this quote from Henry Nouwen, and it says this, But what if our interruptions are in fact opportunities? If they are challenges to an inner response by which growth takes place, and through which we come to the fullness of being? What if the events of our history are molding us as a sculptor molds his clay? And if it is, not, or if it is only in a careful obedience to these molding hands, that we can discover our real vocation and become mature people. Let's pray. 
Lord God, we thank you so much for this time. We thank you for the technology that allows us to stay connected like this and be a community still. Lord, we thank you that you are a, the cornerstone, the one true cornerstone, the treasure of our hearts. May we build our lives off of you, Lord. May our community, our church build itself off of you, Lord, and may our world build itself off of you, Lord. We pray just for your grace on our world and on our community and on all those being affected right now, Lord. May we all press into you and trust you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You like this video? Want to see more like it? Swipe up, like, comment, and subscribe. Love you guys.